Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd Why is it important to have an idea about who Imran Khan is or uh, Imran Hussein? The reason being for this is because he calls many people and gives many, many lectures and has a lot of popularity with many of the youth. So it's imperative and an obligation on someone from Ahl Sunnah to share with us knowledge about the status of this individual. And due to the fact that he is an individual has many, many misunderstandings and misinterpretation and in fact a dangerous ideology as I made clear in the last uh, discussion about him that makes it even more imperative for us to clarify some of his issues and warn against him. Why? Because he has a great impact on our youth around the world and he has a lot of popularity and he calls to things which are not only dangerous for his soul, but they're dangerous for the souls of others because they reach the youth. The youth believe then that there is a new methodology, as he described in his lecture. He said that there's a methodology that, there's a difference in methodology, that basically not to take Quran and Sunnah as literal, but that you can make all a kind of analogies and all kind of... Uh, interpretations that are not literal and what does that do to the Sharia of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for example says that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala descends to the, to the lowest heaven the last third of the night but if you interpret that through analogy and through your intellect and metaphorically as uh, Ali uh, as uh, Imran Hussein does then you can see everyone's intellect will lead them to something different. What kind of understanding of Islam will we have? What kind of Islam will there be if we allow people to speak about anything and to say whatever they please without going back to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam and how the Sahaba how they understood the religion. That's what it is. It's not out of hasid. I would love to see the man successful in calling to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I would encourage people to listen to him. But when you hear what people like that have to say, when they distort the very and destroy the principles of Ahl Sunnah, what the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is built upon and how it's preserved what the men from before us, Ahl Hadith, Ahl Athar, the Salaf of this Ummah, how they preserved the methodology they did to preserve the Sunnah so that we would have the pristine Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that they hated any kind of innovation and any people who made metaphors with the Sunnah and any people who made analogies with the Sunnah and any people who destroyed the principles that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam left for us and that the Sahaba Radiallahu Ta'ala Anu Majma'een made uh, codified for us then how can we accept from somebody like this who comes 1,400 years later and says it's metaphorical, even though there's many people before him who said this, who deviated and said these things. Many people, even the Jahmiya and the, the, the Mu'tazila and the uh, many, many other sects, later the Asha'ira with their Ta'wil, that they, they said that the Sunnah, that many of those Hadith were metaphorical, that don't take them literal, don't take them really to your heart, but take the flowing meaning. Take the meaning that the methodology, the new methodology of the intellect will lead you to. But the ulama, they destroyed those principles. Those principles of falsehood and bid'ah. And here's what they said for us to do about people like that. Let's listen to the statement of Imam Ahmed. Waqala Abdullah ibn ah, uh, Imam Ahmed. The son of Imam Ahmed, Rahimallah Ta'ala, the one of the four great Imams, and I hope you take from them before you would take from uh, Imran Hussein. Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He said, Sa'altu Abba Thor, Ibrahim ibn Khalid al Kalbi, an Hussein al Karabisi, fatakalama fihi bi kalama su radi. So the son of Imam Ahmed, Abdullah uh, ibn Ahmed, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He said that I asked Abu Thor, Ibrahim ibn Khalid al-Kalbi, 
one of our Salaf, about Hussein al-Karabisi, one of the people known for innovation and, and uh, one of the sects of innovation. He asked him about this individual and he said, فَتَكَلَّمَ فِيهِ بِكَلَامْ So Abdul, uh, uh, Abu, Abu, Abu Thor spoke about this individual, al-Karabisi, with very, uh, uh, very harsh and, and, and strong speech, very stern and, and, and harsh speech in, in a bad way, meaning the individual was a person of innovation and desires, so we spoke and made clear uh, the, 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 the condition of this individual by speaking harsh against him as a warning to protect the Ummah of Muhammad وسلم, from bid'ah. Because every bid'ah is misguided. And every, uh, and every misguidance leads to the fire. This is the speech of Muhammad وسلم, It's not from me. Alayhi salatu wasalam. قال شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى فإذا كان الرجل مخالة في سر لأهل الشر يهثر منه In مجموعة فتاوى شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية he said رحمه الله تعالى he said that if a man is mixing with uh, the mixing in private with the people of innovation then warn against him. This shows us how the Salaf were, that they, they didn't play with Allah's religion. They wanted to be safe. They wanted Jannah. And that's why they used to say, Talib al-Ilm, Talib al-Jannah. The person who seeks knowledge is the person who seeks Jannah. They were sincere, unlike us. They were sincere, and they were firm about the Sabeel al-Mu'mineen. They stayed stern, stern and fast, steadfast on the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They didn't play and allow to, to mix. They didn't mix with the people of desires. When they, if they were to hear a person like uh, uh, Hussein, uh, Ali, uh, Imran Hussein, if they were to hear a person like this, they would probably call him Zindik. Zindik, like a heretic. Why? Why? And why? Am I saying this just from my desires and my general speculation? No, I'm telling you from Elm. I'm telling from Elm because we have so many texts from the Salaf. From, from the Sahaba, the Tabi'een with Tabi'at Tabi'een and those after them. I can bring you volumes, in Arabic especially, volumes of books. And there's so many translated works that tells you how the Salaf were about staying fast, staying away from the people of desires, warning against the people of desires. And especially, I, I, I would only speak about uh, uh, Imran Hussein only because I see he is very dangerous. He's not, has some small mistakes, some small bid'ah, something that we could even keep silent of. It's not that I would waste my time and spend time like that, especially if he's popular in the eyes of the people. But the reason I do it out of adina nasiha, out of advice, why? Because wallahi, billahi, tillahi, I swear by Allah that what he's calling the people is the hellfire. That the man distorts the religious principle so much, he turns sunnah into bid'ah and bid'ah into sunnah. That's how dangerous he is. Listen to his lectures. If you have any knowledge about Islam, I, I guarantee you anyone who studies anything about Islam, and I don't care what madhab you stand for, you, you won't accept what he says. You can't possibly accept what he says if you study. Now, if you only can take your knowledge from the YouTube, you only take your knowledge from translated works, and you can't even distinguish what the haq is from the battle, then yeah, I could see you could be deceived by Imran Hussein. Wa'iyadin billah min dhalika. قال أيوب السختياني رحمه الله تعالى قال لي أبو قلابة لا تمكن أصحاب الأهواء من سمعك فينبض فيه ما شاء أيوب السختياني رحمه الله تعالى he said and he said to, he said uh, that أبو uh, أبو قلابة said to me do not allow the people of desires to uh, do not listen to the people of desires, and you know, and allow them an audience, allow uh, give them an audience. Don't listen to them, basically, because they will plant in your, they will plant in you what they want. This is how the Salaf were. They didn't even want to listen. Some of the Salaf Ibn Sirin, and I'm sure many of us have heard of Ibn Sirin. I don't know if it's the same Ibn Sirin who had. I don't think it's the same one with the books. But anyway, Ibn Sirin, who was one of the, I believe he was one of the Itba'at Tabi'in, the third generation. 
possibly one of the Tabi'in. And he, there's a narration that he, a person of innovation, wanted to read the Qur'an. Read, the Qur'an is this book of Allah, it's a speech of Allah. It's uncreated, it's divine, it's perfect. He wanted to read the Qur'an to him. He, he said, I, he put his hands in his ears. In another narration of, of one of the Salaf, and I'm not sure if it was Ibn Sirin, and you find these narrations in Shara Sunnah, Imam Baba Hari, and, and other books. In this narration, one of the Salaf, he saw his son leave the house of an innovator. And he said, I would have rathered that you left the house of a, uh, a Christian or a Jew or a man or a muhannath even. He said, even a, like a hermaphrodite or, or, or a feminine, a man who is similar to a woman, then have left the house of an innovator. Allahu Akbar. They preserved Allah's deen. They were serious about Allah's deen. It wasn't about entertainment. I like his new YouTube videos. I like to hear about the UN and the political situation. And I like to hear about, you know, the, the, the latest political scandal and how the new world order is affecting us. How the Illuminati said this and how the eye looks like this and, and the interpretation. They weren't about that. They were about this deen. They were about trying to go to Jannah and save themselves from the hellfire and the Adhab al-Qabr. And may Allah bless us to be like that. A last narration I'm going to read. Waqala Uthman. Ibn Zaida, rahimahullah ta'ala, Usini Sufyan qal, la tu khalid sahib al bid'ah. In the book entitled Ibana, Uthman ibn Zaida, rahimahullah ta'ala, he was advised by Sufyan, meaning Sufyan Athori, who was one of the tabi'in, rahimahullah ta'ala, who said, do not mix, so he, 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 he this was the advice from Sufyan. Isn't that sufficient advice for you? Isn't that advice of the Salaf the same advice we want? Of course it is, if we want paradise. Prophet said, nas qarni thuma ladina thuma ladina He said, the best of the people is my generation, then those follow them, then those follow them. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Letting us know the, the, you know, you have to establish first that you believe that the Salaf is the best generation. If you don't believe, if you want, new people and, and, and new ideologies and new methodologies, well then, there's nothing we can do for you. There's nothing we can guide you to. We can only invite you to Kitab wa Sunnah and the Faham and the Salaf. So, uh, Uthman ibn Zayda, he said, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he said, Sufyan Athori gave him nasiha, gave him advice. And what was the advice he gave him? He said, do not mix with the people of bid'ah, the people of innovation. Don't, don't listen to them. Don't give them one second of your time because it'll get in your heart. It will affect your heart. Especially if you don't have the tools to distinguish between truth and falsehood. Especially if you haven't studied something from Islam to be able to distinguish, you know, who's calling to the Sunnah and who's not. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with guidance and bless Imran Hussein to leave what he's upon and call people to Kitab al-Sunnah and study Kitab al-Sunnah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all and forgive us all of our many sins and help us to go forward and unite the ummah based on the Quran and based on the Sunnah and based on the understanding of the Salaf of this ummah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.